What were you thinking? Hi, my name is Brayden. I'm in third grade. Just so you know, I'm probably the funniest kid in school. Seriously. I've made some kids cry and almost wet their pants because they were laughing so hard. I'm hilarious. Anyways, this year school started the same way it does every year. The teacher explains the rules, we practice the rules, and then we practice them some more. Don't teachers realize third graders know how to follow the rules? Well, on Friday, I realized why we practice the rules. <coughs> My teacher began class by saying, Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to... That's when it just happened. I shouted out, Talk about how awesome I am. The class giggled. My teacher, Ms. Vickerman, said, Whoa, Brayden, we have rules to follow in class. Is interrupting me when I'm talking to the classmates following the rules? No, I guess it isn't being respectful, I answered. Right. Remember the first day of school, we talked about what those rules look like in class, and we said, one way to show respect is to raise your hand if you have something to say, and calmly wait for the teacher to call on you. That is one way to control your impulses. Control our what? I'm sorry, Ms. Vickerman, but that sounds like grown-up talk. Mrs. Vickerman smiled and said, They are big words, but what it means is that sometimes our bodies are telling us to do things and we have to decide whether or not to do them. Later on, Mrs. Vickerman pulled me aside. She asked, When you shouted out, saying we were going to talk about how awesome you are, what were you thinking? Well, I thought it would be really funny. Right, but did you make the situation better or worse? I sat there for a second, then sighed and said, <sighs> Worse. Mrs. Vickerman explained that there's times to be funny and times to be serious at school. Mrs. Vickerman gave me a card with four easy steps to follow before saying or doing something. Number one, stop what you were doing. Number two, think about what you are going to say or do. Number three, decide if it will make the situation better or worse. And number four, choose the behavior that makes the situation better. That didn't seem too hard to follow. Later that day in PE, we were playing a new dodgeball game. The only rules were we could not hit kids in the face and you could not go to the other team's side. My team was ahead of things and we were doing great. Out of the corner of my eyes, I saw Amanda sneak over to our side and hit one of the players with a ball. Like a cheetah, I sprinted over to Amanda and I threw a ball right at her face. Just as the ball was going to hit her, Coach called out, Brayden, get over here right now. I saw Amanda on the floor crying and knew this was not going to end well. Then I heard the same words again. What were you thinking? I explained how I was mad at Amanda for cheating and I hit her with the ball. Coach did not look happy. He told me I needed to control my impulses. Coach asked if hitting Amanda with the ball made the situation better or worse. Worse. I whispered. Coach pulled out the tip from Mrs. Vickerman's card and asked me if I had followed the steps. I realized I had not followed step number one, stop what you were doing. Controlling impulses might be harder than I thought. That day when I got home, my parents already knew about what happened at school. Mom and Dad said we were practicing controlling our impulses at home, and they had a copy of Mrs. Vickerman's card that she gave me. Oh, great. With all that had happened at school, I was surprised to see Mom was making cupcakes for me. Yum! As they were cooling off on the counter, I went in like a hungry bear. I ate 12 cupcakes and then had a huge tummy ache. Mom came in looking shocked and asked, What in the world happened to your brother's birthday cupcakes for his class? Uh-oh, maybe those weren't for me? Brayden, you know you're supposed to ask permission, and with everything that's happened at school today, what were you thinking? I was thinking about how good they would taste. Did eating those cupcakes make the situation better or worse? Well, they did taste good, I mumbled. I'm sure they did. But overall, did that make the situation for you, your brother, and me better or worse? Worse. We went over the card Mrs. Vickerman gave me again. On top of that, I had to help my mom make more cupcakes instead of playing my favorite video game. Not a fun night. Why were those four steps so hard to follow? A few days later at school, it finally clicked. I was being my usual hilarious self with my friends at lunch. We were having a great time. Then I felt something mushy and wet smack me on the head. 
A kid from another class threw jello at me with his whole table was laughing. I immediately thought he was messing with the wrong person. Time to teach him a lesson. I grabbed some of my mashed potatoes and got ready to throw a mashed potato fistball at his head. I reached my arm way back to get full speed. As my arm was about to go forward, I stopped. I got this weird picture in my head of that card. I asked myself, is this going to make the situation better or worse? I knew the answer, and though it was hard, I decided to raise my hand over my head to get the teacher's attention. Mrs. Vickerman came over and I explained what happened. She went and talked to the other boys and had them go to the principal's office to finish their lunch. Whoa, was I just able to control my impulse? This made me feel good about myself. Later in class, Mrs. Vickerman pulled me aside. She said, I noticed you had mashed potatoes in your hand when you raised your hand today at lunch. Something tells me you weren't planning to eat those. I smiled and said, yeah, I was going to hit the boy in the head with them, but decided it would be better to talk to you about it since it's one of the rules of the cafeteria. She laughed and said, so what were you thinking? Stay out of trouble. I was thinking I'm sick of getting in trouble and for once I wanted to make the right choice. That's great, and your good choice did make the situation better this time. Yep, I said. Maybe I was becoming an impulse expert after all. That night when I got home, my parents asked my brother and me to pick up our toys, and he had just left his remote control car, the one he never lets me play with, right in the middle of the floor. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought just for a second this might be a good time to take my brother's remote control car and hide it in my closet. But then again, would an impulse expert do that? I knew what the right thing to do was, so I walked into my brother's room and gave him his remote control car. My brother said, thanks a lot, booger brain. At first I got mad and then I just laughed. I may be becoming an expert in controlling my impulses, but I'll never be able to control my brother. Thank you.